بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد فاتم لما أغلق وكاتم لما سبق الناس الحق بالحق والحاج إلى شراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدر مدار عظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we are going to continue our coverage of the text in Anatu Mutafahim fi Adab Muta'allim by Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Khadim and continuing the next section Fasl fi Niyati fi Hal in Ta'allumi this is the section where he clarifies the realities of the intention and how to make that intention and to what or to who it is that we should be uh, making our intention toward. وَقَالَ وَهِمُهُ اللَّهِ لَبُدَّ لِلْتَعْلِبِ فِي الزَّمَانِ تَعَلُّمِ مِنْ مَقْصَدِ الْمُهْدَانِ وَنِيَّةٌ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ يَاتِي أَصْلٌ إِذَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَبِالتِّلَابِ الْإِلْمِ يَنْوِ دَارِي نَيْلَ وَرِدَ اللَّهِ وَتِلْكَ الدَّارِ إِحْيَاءَهُ لِلدِّينِ وَالْإِزَالَةَ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَغَيْرُ لِلْجَحَالَةَ إِبْقَاءَ الْإِسْلَامِ فَعِلْمِ بَاقِي إِنْدَ الْذَوِي سَبْقِي هُمَاسِ سَبْقِي The Sheikh, may Allah give him life, said that he said it is absolutely necessary for the student in his time to seek that in his time who is seeking knowledge to have a good and sound intention. He must have something, it must be an intention that is made toward the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he says, he continues where he says, uh, that the intention in every situation comes under the principle uh, that states that actions are according to their intentions. This is a hadith, a famous hadith that uh, we find in the beginning of many hadith books in the Ma'amadu Miniyati. And he says that this, this particular principle that actions are according to what the intentions are. In other words, that you only get the reward for what it is that you intend for. If you intend for something that is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're going to you're going to get that thing. If you intend to go to a land, as the hadith says, to go to marry someone, or uh to seek some benefit from something, then you're going to get what you intend for. And the point of the hadith, of this principle, rather, is that if you seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's the reward that you're going to receive. Regardless of the action, the action is really not the important point here. The point here is the intention. And the intention is the crucial the crucial and the most, the most important aspect of what we do is what we intend for. He says, dari." So to this, he says he also intend. Uh, therefore, the seeker uh, of knowledge has the intention that revolve around the attainment of the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That. The seeker of knowledge, his intention is only directed toward seeking the pleasure of Allah. That's it. There is no other intention. There is no other maqsad. There is no other objective. And seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, is seeking to be with his most beloved messenger, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So, for the seeker to out at the outset, if he intends to uh, to seek knowledge for fame, for particular awards or accolades, 
uh, if he's seeking degrees or ijazas or any type of recognition from creation, then his intention, his actions are bottom. There's no good. Because what's the point in seeking something that is going to be, uh, is going to perish, is going to diminish, is going to at some point, uh, be non-existent. Rather than seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is living and does not die. So the point of seeking knowledge is closeness to Allah, is seeking the pleasure of Allah, is seeking the, is seeking the face of Allah. And everything else or any other intention other than that is no good. It's bought up. And he says, he says that in, in, in talking about the intention that the, the seeker of knowledge should seek the intention uh, in, in seeking the pleasure of Allah, you revive the Islam. You revive, this, you revive the deen to where uh, it is renewed among the people and it is kept alive by the knowledge that you obtain and the knowledge that you spread among the people. You do this by benefiting yourself and removing yourself from the darkness of ignorance and putting yourself in a position to receive the light of knowledge. And by doing this, you at the same time you illuminate yourself, at the same time you illuminate others. And the student of knowledge is honored. The secret of knowledge is honored. You're honored when you go out the house to seek the knowledge. You're honored uh, by all of Allah's creation. All the birds in the sky, all the fish in the sea, they make the offer you. All the angels, they're with you. You're in a state of jihad. So by this seeking the knowledge, you're putting yourself in a position where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you. And others will at the same time be motivated, inspired to do the same. And so by this he says, Ibka al Islami fa bil ilmi ya fa bi ilmi baki in the other we subki humati subki. And also this intention by reviving Islam and establishing uh, uh, establishing Islam through knowledge, you also maintain the deen. Islam is maintained, or Islam was maintained by our pious predecessors with their knowledge. It is their knowledge that made Islam strong. It made Islam alive. They preserved it. They preserved the Asanid. They preserved the chains of transmission they preserved the madhabs. They preserved the, the, the orders in which the deen was, was learned and the way that it was taught, the methodology. And by doing so, you continue that tradition and you connect yourselves with our prized predecessors and we continue the tradition of teaching, of learning and the way that they were taught and the way that they learned. And by this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us honor and sharaf in the dunya. ثُمَّ قَالْ وَلَا يُسِحُ الزُّهُدْ وَالتَّقْوَ الْمَعَا جَحْلٍ وَبَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى وَأَسْمَعَا أَنَّ الْفَسَادِ الْعَالِمِ تَحَتَّكَا أَكْبَارُ مِنْهُ جَاحِلٌ تَنَسَّكَا The Sheikh says that Zuhud and Taqwa cannot coexist with an ignorant person. And even some scholars that I've heard have the opinion that indeed the corruption of the pious ignorant person is greater than the corruption of the shameless person of knowledge. So, in other words, zuhud is in essence to put the dunya in your hand and not in your heart to remove yourself from the material world, not to attach yourself, to detach yourself from the material world. 
and to attach yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And to have, to, by doing this, then you become the type of individual that is illuminated because your heart would be enlightened because what you're going to be doing with your time is going to be in a constant state of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a constant state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to spend your time seeking knowledge, studying, reciting, memorizing, saying prayers on the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And taqwa can only be achieved through knowledge. Taqwa, having God consciousness, being aware of your state, having ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two characteristics, they cannot coexist at the same time with an ignorant person, a person who has no knowledge. And he says that some scholars say that the corruption, the facade of the um, of the ignorant person, the jahilun tanasaka, the, the, the ignorant person who, though he's ignorant, he's a righteous individual. He's a good person. He has a good heart. But he has no knowledge. This type of person, though he's a good, he's a good person and has a good heart, because of his ignorance, he's going to go astray. And by his words, as well as his actions, he'll lead others astray. And this is a very dangerous person. Because they mean well, but other people are going to be led in the wrong direction because of what they do and what they say. Whereas the person of knowledge who may have a lot of knowledge, he may know a lot of, of, of ilm, a lot of, uh, he may know a lot of Quran, he may know a lot of hadith, he may know a lot of fiqh, he may have studied different places with different shiuch. But if he has no shame, if he has no shame in what his actions are, he's going to harm himself. But by his words, he won't lead other people astray. So this person is not as dangerous as the person that we, that we discussed before, the one who's ignorant, but at the same time, he's a good person. He's a righteous individual. And so this shows that in the opinion of most scholars, that it was the knowledge that was the difference. It was the knowledge that was, diff it was the difference. So when an individual moves himself or herself from the darkness of ignorance, and that's what ignorance is, it's a darkness. It's a way that, uh, it's, it's as if you're, you're, you're in a, a dark room and you're walking and you're trying to navigate yourself around a dark room. You can't see anything. But when you obtain that knowledge, it's like you're switching on the light and everything else is illuminated to you. You can see where you're going. You can see where you're walking. You're in the, going in the proper direction. And this is an example of the similitude of what knowledge can do for us. Insha'Allah ta'ala. ثم قال كذاك فلينوي به شكرا من نعمة العقل وصحة البدن. He says that uh, and likewise, the seeker of knowledge intends to show gratitude for the graces and the blessings of the intellect and the healthy body. So by seeking the knowledge and uh, the, the seeker of knowledge, he is a, he's in a continuous state of gratitude toward his Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's showing uh, his, his gratitude for Allah endowing us with the intellect that he did not uh, give to the lower animals. And by doing this, he's honored the sons of Adam, human beings, to where they are honored in the world. That we have the, though we have the ability to, uh, to do right, to do wrong, to cause mischief, 
to cause problems in the world, which mankind does. But we're the best of Allah's creation. We are the most honored of Allah's creation because Allah has endowed us with the intellect, an intellect that he did not endow the other animals or the other creation in the world. At the same time, uh, we're, the seeker of knowledge is grateful for having health, having the ability to seek the knowledge, having the physical ability to seek the knowledge. Even though along the path, uh, one, you know, you're going to be tested with sickness, hardship, uh, physical disability at times. But the student of knowledge, the seeker of knowledge, you keep working hard. You keep pushing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to honor you and bring you sharaf. And he's going to uh, uh, bring you shifa, a healing, to where at the end, you're going to be a much stronger, a stronger Muslim, a more productive Muslim for the hardship and the toil that you go through along the path toward knowledge. Then the Sheikh says, "Let tanu al min al anami bihi wa listijlabi lil hutami." He says that. He says, and do not seek knowledge for seek, uh, seeking acceptance from people and do not seek to attract the, ver the vanities of this world. This is extremely important that many people, many people, especially uh, students of knowledge, are the most prone to this because when an individual is known to be a knowledgeable person, uh, people are attracted to them. Uh, people... Uh, deem them as important and they're honored and they should be. However, at the same time, if this gets into the heart of the individual where the, the person begins to see himself as better or in a higher position than other people because of his knowledge, this is extremely harmful. So, the Sheikh here says not to seek knowledge for the purposes of attracting and being honored among people. Don't try to please other people. Only see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only see closeness to the messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa This is it. Do not seek the vanities of this world. Do not seek money and fame and wealth, and, and accolades, and awards, and recognition from people. This isn't what Allah has intended for us. The seeker of knowledge, his intentions are pure, pure, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam only. Khalas, that's it. Everything else, as we said, is bottom. Then the Sheikh says, "Kukuli kastin laysa bil musdani mithla karama chila del sultani." That, like all intentions that do not have good qualities, such as intending to receive the generosity of those in authority, that many people, a uh, lot many times, people who seek knowledge uh, throughout history, they do so for um, to be honored by those in authority, whether they be politicians or kings or the sultan or the hakim or the amir that, or the governments, scholars at times would be, would seek closeness to those in authority because they would be given certain positions. This is not permissible. This is not permissible. This intention here is facet. So we don't seek to, we don't seek knowledge for the purposes of position, of gaining position by those in authority. Then he says, 
Bismillah. He says, وَكَلَّمَا يَرْغَبُوا فِي الدُّنْيَا الْوَرَى مَنْ لَذَّةَ الْعَمَلِي وَعِلْمَ يَرَى He says, if very few people in this world are found who desire to taste the sweetness of the combination of action and knowledge. In other words, there are very few people who understand the sweetness of acting with knowledge. This is something that only those who seek knowledge and obtain knowledge can understand. Because the sweetness, the love of seeking knowledge, the love of, the love of, of, of experiencing what knowledge is and acting upon that knowledge is the sweetest taste of the believer. Because by doing so, you're gaining the love, gaining the pleasure, gaining the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're being, by doing that, you're attaching yourself directly to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The greatest way to honor the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is by seeking the knowledge of the Sharia that he was sent with. Many times Muslims we get into the 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 mode of the social activities of, of singing songs, singing praises on the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and all this is fine. Alhamdulillah is good. There's no there's no problem in that. However, people need to understand that the greatest way to honor the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam whether it's on the maulid, whether it's any day during the week, any time during the year, is by seeking the knowledge of the Sharia that he came with. This is the greatest way that we gain closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the closest way that we can, the best way, the most virtuous way that we can honor our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. وتستمع قول البليغ الشادي من طالب العلوم للمعادي نعم طلاب الجاه جر العمري بالعرف والنحي عن عمري النقري The Sheikh says, so listen to the eloquent one. And here the eloquent one, he's talking about Al-Imam Al-Azam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah. He said, so listen to the eloquent one. In his words, من طالب العلم للمعادي أبو حنيفة said من طالب العلم للمعادي فزا بفرل من من الرشادي فيا لخسراني لا فيا لخسراني طالبيه لنيل فرل من العبادي that he said the one who seeks knowledge for the purposes of the akhira to obtain obtain his provision in this world to take with him to the Akhira. He is the one who's successful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one that's going to gain success. That woe to the one who loses, the loser, who seeks to obtain the fado, to obtain the pleasure, to, to obtain recognition from creation. So this reiterates the point that the, the purpose of seeking knowledge is for Allah only. If we seek to please other, other than Allah, the creation of Allah, this is bottom. This is bottom. So it's extremely important that students understand this concept. Then he says, Na'am, na'am telabu. نعم تلاب جاه جر عمري بعرف ونهي عن عمري نقري. He says, but what a blessing it is to seek the generosity of one with a high status or position in the affair of calling the, to goodness and prohibiting that which is reprehensible. So he talked about seeking knowledge for the purpose of closeness to the sultan, the those in authority, 
But here, he says, seek your knowledge to those, to be close to those in authority for the purposes so that you can command to good, command the people and call the people to goodness and to be an example for, for the prohibition of those reprehensible acts to reject the munka, reject evil. This is not blameworthy. This is actually a good quality. For this purpose, this is a good quality. This doesn't harm the person at all. So we can seek this the overall objective. At times, maybe we have to go and get close to a person who has some position, to get close to an individual who has some type of status or some wealth. For the purposes of benefiting mankind, for calling to good, to forbidding evil, this is not a blameworthy characteristic, from according to the Sheikh here. He says, Tanfidi, Tanfidi Hakun Ma Izazi Kowa, the Dini Lamaradi Nafsi Wahawa, the Kadri Mabi He Yukim Udalik, for that Tarika Tal Jawazi Salik. He says, and also to have intentions to carry out the implementation of the truth with the strength of honor in regard to the deen, not for the ego or the self or the lower desires. So the seeker of knowledge along with uh, 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 the pleasure of Allah, all this is encompassed, it, 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 it contains, uh, it, it's encompassed within the pleasure of Allah that you establish truth. We seek to establish truth which is uh, a primary function of the Muslim, is that we seek to establish the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek to establish the law, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek to establish truth, because where there's truth, falsehood cannot exist. Falsehood cannot exist. Darkness cannot exist where there's light. It doesn't, uh, it's weaker. It's not in a position where it can, there can be any type of struggle between darkness and light. Light will always win. So the seeker of knowledge, in essence, he establishes the truth, the truth of Islam. And with the strength, with strength and honor, with regard to the deen, okay? Ma izazi kowa, that deen la maradi nafsi wahara, that he does not, uh, he does not seek this thing for his own self, for his nafs, or for his hawa, his lower desires. This is uh, something that the student of knowledge must always be on guard on, is his own self. That the Muslim, the seeker of knowledge, his enemies are for. The nafs, the hawa, the shahwa, and the shaitan. It's not necessarily the creation. The seeker of knowledge has to be aware of his own heart, be aware of his own self, his own lower desires, that he's, his intentions are pure. And his, this must be renewed every day, every darts, every lesson, every time he goes out to seek knowledge. You have to renew the intention. You have to make the intention and keep at the forefront of your mind what it is the objective is. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ قَالْ بِكَدْرِ مَا بِهِ يُقِيمُ ذَلِكْ فَذَاتُ رِيكَةَ الْجَوَازِ السَّالِكْ He says this path is permissible for, for someone with the ability to establish that, meaning to establish, the, the, to command the good and forbid the wrong. So these people who, uh, the students of knowledge who, or the seeker of knowledge who seeks to be close to someone with wealth or authority, for the purposes of commanding good and seeking evil, and I'm sorry, and pro prohibiting evil, then he says this path, where this path is not blameworthy. This is a an, an honorable, an honorable intention to have. Then he says, "Well, ilmu bi jahdi kathiru yuktasab fasrifhu an haqiri dunya yuchtalab, wal alki sama." وَالْأَلْكِ سَمْعَكَ لِكَوْلِ مَنْ عَقَلْ فَقَالُ فِي الدُّنْيَا هِيَ دُنْيَا عَقَلْ He says, 
and seeking knowledge with much hardship, but Jahdi will gain provision for you. So exchange it with procuring this wretched dunya. That, in other words, the hardship on the path that one takes, the, the hardship that one will incur for seeking knowledge, because it's a test. You're going to be tested. By doing this, Allah will increase you in provision. You don't lose anything by seeking knowledge. Even if you have to take a lesser paying job to have the time, even if you have to take a job that's more difficult for you, you, uh, you're not able to live the luxury lifestyle you once had where your time was spent working and working and working. Uh, now you're taking time and you're sacrificing time, which means in essence, you're sacrificing money. And to seek the knowledge, that hardship that you incur will increase you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your provision is in, in, in actuality will be increased. And so he says, don't do this, but don't seek to procure the life or the material, the, 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 the vanities of this wretched dunya. Okay? Don't seek, uh, seek, in other words, seek the akhira and not the dunya. He said, then pay attention to the saying from the intelligent one, the Zahid, when he said, the dunya is less than a little. So what does this mean? It means that, um, he said that the Zahid, there's a, there's a saying by the Zahid, that means that he a dunya akala min al khalil that the dunya is less than a little. It's, in other words, it has no value. The dunya has no value, no matter what you amass in this world. It's only temporary. It has no value. Cars, wealth, money, clothing, uh, no matter how much land you have, how many cars you have, how much wealth you have. The reality of it is that it's, all of it is an illusion. It's bottom. There's nothing. It has no value because you can't take it with you to the grave. And so the student of knowledge, the wise person, the Zahid understands that the knowledge, if you can't take it with you, if, if the, 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 the material wealth, the, the, the material dunya, if you can't take it with you, what value does it have? But the knowledge that you gain in this world the knowledge you gain in order to perform properly, to perform worship, to do righteous actions with, that you take 